announcing the launch of our platform, which we're calling the End Platform. For those who followed our rebrand in September at Advertising Week, um, our sort of mantra was the power of and. And so we named the platform and because we are doing this in collaboration with a lot of different partners, both on the buy, sell, and measurement side. Um, and so what we are announcing is um, a platform that has the ability, using the 38 million households of data that we've pulled together across Comcast, Cox, and Charter, so the largest TV set-top box data set that exists in the United States, the ability to define and find an audience, um, execute on that audience across a multi-screen television environment, and then measure and report against that audience um, in a single platform, in a single interface. So it's really the first of its kind buy-side platform um, that we're launching. Um, the center of this platform actually existed when I got here 18 months ago, the ability to create a plan off of traditional age and gender demos in television. Um, we've moved that into audience based now that we have the data um, to power it and created an interface that you can create these audiences on the front end and then measure them on the back end. And so uh, it's really a first of its kind from the kind of scale that we have here at Ampersand. So it's exciting, exciting for us certainly and hopefully exciting for the marketplace as well. And you've been here for 18 months. It seems like you've been on an incredible journey of transformation during that time. Why did you feel the need to go on that journey? Well, um, well anybody who, who knows of me at all. I, my, my background is in data-driven media businesses, so I've run them, I've built them, um, and, uh, and so I came to then NCC about 18 months ago because I think it's very clear that television is becoming differently data-driven. You know, TV has always been data-driven, but it's been on a very small panel, and now there's data that looks a lot like digital, which is the world that I came from, um, in the television universe. And so what we've been doing over the past year and a half is really taking the data sets that we're lucky enough to have available to us and putting them in, um, in a sort of harmonized way so that the buy side can really lean into a new way of buying television that we think will be a lot more accurate. So you buy off of true audience and custom audiences that um, can work for the brand across a multi-screen environment. Um, and I don't think that there's a full understanding of the scale that we bring to market. So in 2019, as an example, we sold 65 million spots of television advertising. So it's a big number across 3 billion hours of programming. So, you know, we are, you know, there's a lot of folks in the industry, hopefully more know about us now, but I think two years ago, a year and a half ago, when I walked in the door, um, I don't think very many folks, except maybe the local linear teams and agencies knew of us, frankly. Um, and so, um, you know, we've moved into a world of national and local and marrying these two worlds through this data that we have access to. And so just the scale of what we're doing in a data-driven media environment is really sort of the transformation that we've all been on uh, for the last year and a half. Because of the shareholders in the business, you also have the privileged position of working with set to box data. How important has that been in the development of a new platform? It's incredibly important. You know, we pulled together, it's a lot of the work that we were doing ahead of the rebrand. One of the announcements of the rebrand was that we pulled together the 38 million households of uh, set-top box data, the data insights across Comcast, Cox, and Charter. Um, that gives us a baseline um, of data across screens. A lot of people think that that's only in one screen, that's actually across screens. Um, that allows us to start adding attributes. So the set-top box data is an important component and a foundational component of the data we have, but then you start adding attributes. For example, this year is a very important political year, as we know in the United States, you know, adding L2 data to all of the set-top box data we have as an example. Um, adding Experian data to the data we have, adding pulp data for auto is an important. So adding these additional attributes to the data that we already have as a cornerstone really gives us a, a, you know, a large swath of the U.S. population upon which to plan, you know, define and plan audiences against in television. It's really the most substantial data set in television that exists today. And I know you're also very passionate about data-driven attribution, and I think I you have some interesting partners working with you on the development of the platform. Yes, absolutely. So we, we're not doing this all by ourselves. You know, a lot of, when I walked in 18 months ago, I came to then NCC Media, there was this really amazing center 
piece of technology, which was used as an internal workflow tool, but the magic of it is that it was connected already to all the buy-side systems of the agencies and all the sell-side systems of the suppliers that we represent across cable, telco, satellite, and additionally streaming partners that we work with as well, like a Pluto TV as an example. And so all of those connections already existed. So what we did is we added effectively the bookends to that, the define and find, the planning audiences, and that's where the 38 million households of data came in. Um, but as importantly as when you define an audience and plan against an audience, we have all that connective tissue in the company already, and that's existed for over a decade, believe it or not just used for our internal purposes. We never exposed it to others. Um, and then putting this planning, this measurement um, and attribution at the back end with partners like Data Plus Math, um, TV Squared we work with. And so we're very open on the back end for the measure and reporting, leveraging our data in a platform so there's consistency in measurement, right? And we need to get rid of this bespoke there is always room for custom measurement. I'm not saying that there's not, but there, there should be you know, several consistent ways to measure uh, that is automatically populated so that we don't have um, sort of this, this flywheel of people always having to get involved in data. There should be ways to populate data consistently and then you tweak it from there. So that's really what the, the start of this platform is doing. You've retooled the business. Tell us a bit about the year ahead. What kind of 2020 are you envisaging for the company and for the wider market? Yeah, so 2020 is, uh, you know, we have a very substantial political business here. So certainly the platform and rolling out the platform over 2020 is going to be one important initiative. And we're adding additional components into the platform around media and entertainment, for example, that are going to be component additions over the year. So now that we have sort of the, the start um, and the running start, we're gonna be adding um, capabilities that drive our, our business. Um, political is a big component of our business. Um, and so it's a substantial political year, obviously here. So um, we're about 30% of the political TV dollars in the United States here at Ampersand. So it's an important part of our business. So it's gonna be a huge concentration as well. Um, and really, you know, partnering with brands and agencies more now that we have, you know, we've, we've spent the last year and a half since myself and others have gotten here really building this new evolution of Ampersand. And so a lot of this year is going to be spending, you know, partnering more because now they know what we're doing and the capabilities that we have across both linear and addressable television across a wide swath of inventory. So now it's really partnering to see how we best solve our clients problems because we know there's a lot of problems there's a lot of complexity there's a lot of marketing that not you know the marketing versus the reality is not the same and so we're really buckling in to work with clients to to drive to business outcomes well it sounds like you're in great shape to be helping clients in what promises to be a bumper year we certainly uh, think so but finally I believe you're joining us in San Juan for the beat retreat in I a am few weeks yes tell Andy us a bit is about kind enough to have me again tell us a bit about what you're looking forward to are there discussions you're really keen to have yeah, look, I mean, beat, I think the beat retreat, the reason I like it so much is that it, it's big enough but small enough. So, um, and there's always folks there that you can have meaningful conversations with. So, you know, a 10 minute conversation at the beat retreat, you know, makes up for 35 emails and trying to schedule meetings that don't happen for two months sort of thing. And so, and also you get, I think, kind of a true review of what's happening. I think there's sort of a candid conversation that happens there about what we're doing well as an industry. Um, and also what we need to work on together in order to improve the industry as a whole. And so, um, you know, we're, we were a big part of it last year. We're going to have some folks there this year, myself included, and we're really looking forward to it.